What's up guys, this is another Super Geeks production. If you're watching this video, it's probably because I have either given you a Backtrack 4 or 5 Linux CD, uh, and I am trying to get you involved in Linux, um, or you're just somebody who wants to learn basics of Backtrack. This video is to show how to get uh, an operating system from an ISO image burnt and mounted correctly so you can boot to it and also the uh, I will go over most of the commands to get you started in the processes so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the internet <clears throat> type in backtrack very first link and I want you to download the ISO downloading since I have already downloaded this there's no need for me to do it so I'm not. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take that file you just downloaded. You're going to get Ultra ISO or some other type of burning program that burns ISOs. Click and drag or open it through the Profile Manager. Now, you cannot click Burn right here or it is not going to do anything. You must open the zipped file. It will tell you changes will be lost, whatever. This is the file you have to have on your boot directory. To, in order to get past the post and actually get data from a booting ISO image. CD. I'm going to go ahead and burn it. Alright, our burn process is done. I'm going to go ahead and let it auto eject so it can finalize the disk and I'm going to put it in my laptop to show you what you need to do to get Backtrack up and running via wireless ethernet or just to get to the GUI. And the reason I'm doing this on my phone is so I don't have to interleave two video files together. I really don't feel like doing it although it's really easy. Backtrack 4, R2, going in. Now you must set your PC, your desktop, or laptop, whatever you're working on, to auto, to boot off your, your D drive, or whatever letter you use for your burner, slash DVD reader. Once you have done this successfully, it will auto load without having to press any key. I want you to go to Live CD. Okay, you're going to click on Start Persistent Live CD. You're going to let it load. There's a particular process to get Backtrack up and running. This isn't just a custom to Backtrack, but more of a Linux type thing. You're going to let it load all its preliminary key files and script based technology. There's lots of good things about Linux that Windows just doesn't have a clue about or Microsoft I should say so we're letting it load it's booting straight off the CD you're running the whole operating system off of the CD no, no need to install it to your hard drive although I would if I were you I'd make a dual boot Windows 7 at least, Backtrack 4R2. Lots of good network stuff can be done with that. And then since it is persistent, meaning in booting off the CD, it does take a, a few minutes, you know, depending on your speed of your computer, which this one's pretty decent. Once you see all of the uh, the text 
go across the screen. Uh, it'll take a while to load all of the um, the files it needs to, but you'll see a prompt, and it'll say root at whatever, or probably we'll see exactly what it says. But it's important to note that you will not start the graphical user user interface from here unless you type this: start x. Start your graphical user interface. Now it will load into the GUI not the CLI. Okay, backtrack is started next thing you're going to want to do in order to get your wireless configuration utility to even come up to show what wireless networks are around you you have to start your network if you don't do this your wireless won't work or your your ethernet anything wired won't work either so start services network start network now we're going to go to internet WICD, which shows us our wireless networks. And now, if I wanted to, I would connect to one of these networks here. But I'm not going to do that just yet. In order to install Backtrack from a fresh copy, you would click install.sh. Now, this is only if you do not want to do dual boot. There is a specific process to doing dual booting. You can start with the installation of Backtrack. But it's just wise to start with in, uh, Windows installation and then shrink the volume to make a, an extra partition after the Active Directory is already partitioned correctly through the NetMask. So, if you're going to do it like this, this should be the only thing on your computer, backtrack. And I'm not going to go continue with the whole installation process because I already have it on here. Okay, you're going to go forward, forward. I will make a tutorial on how to do a shrink volume next so you can dual boot. Now when you dual boot in Backtrack, Backtrack has a grub boot manager that it installs for you so you can properly dual boot without screwing crap up, which is great cuz other Ubuntu Linux versions don't have it. It is wise to note that Backtrack is an Ubuntu kernel. Okay. If I wanted to install everything, I would do this use guided entire disk but as you can see I already have backtrack on 88 percent and this right here is my windows partition it's only 17 gigs I don't need much for that because I never use it so as you can see you have been familiarized with starting Linux wireless network configuration utility and st you, it's very wise to note again that you must click you know you must do this services start network start or if you wanted to be a wise guy, you open the console, cdtc, init.d, networking, and that would also start your network. Interesting. Oh. It must put a dot forward slash means your fallback directory. It's the, the, it's the exact directory on root is where it looks for the uh, executable, not in the local file. That's why you must put this. Okay, our network is started. Now, we could type WICD. And WICD. Wireless configuration utility should have already popped up, but it's running live. Let's try it here. Okay, now it is, uh, it's very wise to note again, not only that you use start X to start the GUI from the CLI, which means command line interpreter, but you must use the power off command to turn this thing off. You can either do that or you can do shutdown dash R 
space zero and that would uh, go ahead and shut it down as quickly as possible without stopping any tasks which is okay because it's script based technology it's not going to hurt it okay and that's it my next tutorial will be on how to make a shrink volume and dual boot with backtrack 4 installed on your system